EMF is 9 volts, that's our E. By the way, um, the, the past year will use big E, I think. Well, some of the past years, instead of writing this curly E, they will write big E. Same thing, I just prefer to write the curly E because there's so many of the big E already. There's like energy, Young's modulus, all these all also big E. So after I confuse, you confuse, everybody confuse. <laughs> okay, so internal resistance R, potential difference across the battery terminals is 6.9 volts. So that's 6.9 volts, which is from this end to this end, across the terminals law. And that also means, that is also 6.9 volt drop for when you go past this resistor. So across the resistor, also 6.9 volt. Okay, because the only one resistor there. Now the first part they ask us, oh, explain. Mm. Use energy to explain why the PD across the battery. So PD across the battery is this one. PD across battery is not equal to the EMF of the battery. So PD across the battery we call terminal not equals to EMF. Why? We mentioned that. Aha. Because of the culprit. Internal resistance. But how are you going to talk about that? That's only two marks here. So we need to have two main ideas. Explain. You need to explain why. Hmm. The first point is you want to talk about um, what is EMF? How do you differentiate between EMF and PD? So you're going to say EMF is firstly the, the total energy available. So let me write that out. So shortcut EMF. Why did I write the curly E? Anyway, it's the total, avail total available energy. That's what it's supplying now. But, some of it is going to be lost, wasted. <sighs> energy per unit charge, I should say. Why energy per unit charge? Oh, because, you know, W equals to QV. So V is energy per unit charge. That's why we the energy per unit charge. You don't have to write per unit charge, it's okay. So EMM is the total available energy, but, you can put a but here. But there is some energy lost. To what? So there's some energy lost or used or wasted. You can use any of these terms uh, because of that culprit internal resistance. Okay, Some energy lost, used, wasted in internal resistance of battery. I'm going to shortcut and say internal R of battery. Okay. And loss, if you want to talk about loss, what loss as heat la, yeah la, the battery will get hot. Okay? And then if you want to add a concluding statement, this is kind of an extra one, is where you already get your two marks. Therefore, your potential difference across battery will be less than your EMF. Because some of it are lost with you. You supply so much, wasted a bit, then the leftover is what you have to use for the circuit. Okay. Two marks here, that's probably a B1 and a B1. Yep, two B1 marks here. Anyway, let's go on to the calculations. Calculate the current in the circuit. How to calculate? Huh? Current is flowing, right? So flow from here, flow, 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 flow. Current here is the same as current here. How are we going to calculate the current in this circuit? Well, you could use the battery side, but that's kind of troublesome. I'm going to look at the, the resistor side. So the current flowing through the resistor is related to its resistance and the potential difference. Ah, V, I, and R. So here we want to use V equals to I, R as our helpful friend. V is I, R. So V here is uh, the potential across the resistor. So that's given as 6.9 volts. Current, we don't know, we're trying to find. R is 5 ohms. Ohm. Oh, I should put the units here to check. Then you divide, lo. I is 6.9 divided by 5. 1.38 amps. In the final answer box, uh, the, the smallest significant figure is, I guess, to use 2, sure, let me do 2, so I can write 1.4. But for later calculations, I want I want to use 1.38, more accurate a bit. Ah. Here are two marks, one comes from Ohm's law, C1, 
The other one from your final answer, A1. Still not too bad, okay. So that's the first bit on calculating current in the circuit. Then the next page, they ask you to do deal with the internal resistance already. Oh, okay, so no escape. You have to use that complicated uh, new equation, new equation to calculate that. So we want to find the internal resistance R. So you have to remember, hmm, firstly, you have EMF. You lost uh, some volts, and that's your um, terminal potential difference, which is also the VR and VT is the same. I'm going to use VR. So we want to find internal resistance. So I'm going to rewrite this as E equals to, move to the other side first, uh, VR plus VR. This will be I times the small r, and this will be I times the big R for the resistor. Do we know enough information? I think we do. What's the EMF given to us as 9 volts? So we say 9. I, I, I can write that. Uh, what is this VR, IR? Actually, no need to do IR. We already know VR. VR, V, oh, this VR we don't know. Sorry, my bad. We know this is 1.38. R we don't know. Um, this I is also 1.38. Big R we do know. That is how many ohms are? 5 ohm. Actually, VR already given to us 6.9 volt, but I never mind. Lah. I cut out everything for you to see also. So from there, you rearrange everything, calculate your. Oh, where did my cursor go? R equals to. Press calculator should get about 1.52 ohm. So this is the resistance in the battery itself. Wow, how unfortunate. Wasted energy. 1.5 ohm loss volts. Okay, so that means here you have a potential drop of some value that is related to your 1.52 ohm resistance. I don't like that. Oh, by the way, if you want to calculate it, VR is just the current through the battery times the resistance that you just found. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I'm just going to write 1.52 here, and that's my two marks. Wow, what comes from? First one is any of these ideas about including internal resistance in your calculations. That's C1 mark, and the other one from the final, 1.52. Okay, that's how you can apply this internal resistance. Just remember, it's just you lost some voltage, and the rest goes to the circuit. Next one. Ooh, this is kind of new. Have we seen this before? Power in the circuit. Ring some bells a bit. Hmm. For the battery, the total power produced. Power. What is this? Have we seen this before? I think we have a little bit. Power related in circuits can be calculated by a current flowing past a component with a potential drop. Hmm. So what I and what V should you use here? Now you need to know that there's a bunch of stuff, right? A good refresher of chapter 6, okay? So your battery, you're getting chemical energy. Convert to electrical energy, okay? And in the process, some energy is lost. So lost. That is from the lost volts. Lost as heat energy. So in this case, there's some efficiency. <clears throat> efficiency, remember, we use the symbol eta. Okay, how much is converted, how much is going out. So we're looking at the power produced by the battery. So they'll be looking at this part, the chemical energy, which is related to your EMF. EMF. So here the power produced will be current flowing through your battery. So that's we found earlier is 1.38 amps. Here, the V, really, we want to use I times your EMF. What is the EMF? Produce, ah, power produce. EMF is 9 volts, so we say 9 volts. Okay, what's the power produce? 1.38 times 9. That's 12. Ooh, 12 watt battery. Watt. W here is the unit. So I'm going to write, well, I'll just do 12.4 in the final box. So... 12.4 is the power input, power going in to the circuit. 
Now, what actually becomes electrical energy and gets used? What is useful? Well, that's a different story. We're going to look at that next. Efficiency. Hey, efficiency. So to find efficiency, you need to think of, okay, so we have this much of power supply. We already got 12.42. What is actually being used? Well, if you take away all the lost volts, P equals to I V. Now this V here will be your terminal potential difference. Or you could use the VR, la, the voltage drop across your resistor, also can. They are the same value. So here we have 1.38 times, what is the V terminal? 6.9. So 6.9, that will be 9.5522 watts. This is your output power. What actually becomes useful electrical energy that is running around in your circuit? So this is input. Output. Now you can count your efficiency. A efficiency here is your input over output. Hey, sorry, not input over output. Oops, the other way around. Uh, what actually comes out and then what actually goes in here. Yeah. Notice also efficiency can be in percentage or ratio. Um, the mark scheme may show either one, but just so FYI, your efficiency can be in percentage or ratio. I personally like percentages, so I'm going to do percentage. So here output will be my uh, IVT. This is my EI. What are those values? Let me just write it straight in. What's coming out? That's 12.42. What's going in? 9.58. Eh? I keep confusing both. Oh my goodness, my brain is not working this time. Output is 9.522 going around the circuit. Battery itself can produce 12.42. Where's the missing power? <sighs> Internal resistance. Lost volts. Okay, let's see what do we get for this percentage. How many percent efficiency is this battery? 76.66666667 I'm just going to put 77%. That's fine. So that means our little battery here, with its flaws, with its internal resistance, you can have 9 volts EMF going out, but because of this R, that kind of steals, I don't know, how many volts does it steal? A couple of volts. So this is lost energy, and your battery is only 77% efficient. So 77 amount of the power actually goes to work to light up your bulbs, to um, push your resistors, or do whatever stuff. Also, I forgot to mark these things. Oh my goodness, two marks. First one comes from um, IV, so that's your knowing your power stuff and then your final answer. C1, A1. On the efficiency, the first one comes from, it's kind of like your efficiency, output, input, and then your final A1. So yeah, they do kind of link these ideas pretty often, especially when it comes to internal resistance and energy loss.